My name's Elmer Skullall. I was born four miles on this side in the country and uh, kind of around in that area called Matoka. We went to Oshalita School. I do have an older brother and an old, a sister that's older I am. I'm the last of the Mohicans, you know. And uh, my dad's name was Richard Skull. He was a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. My mother was three quarters, and her name was Maggie Daniels. Back then, everybody used their feet. They walked, unless they was you know, I had a horse or something. Most of them didn't. We always walked to and from, and it was quite a ways. Well, I think we lived just a little over a mile from the church. But it didn't matter whether it was cold weather, was raining or snowing or what, they always walked. And in, in the summertime, at night we would go down, the, we'd come down the real track, got off there and walked down kind of like a cow path, you know, just a little path. And to this day, I can't figure how we never did get snake bit. Summertimes, we'd play basketball, you know, we got out and if we, get enough, if we could get enough kids around, well, usually there was some space of quite a ways. And if you had friends come over, well, you'd get out there and play a little ball with no rubber ball or sock ball or whatever. You was left alone to make your own games. You did not, wasn't able to go run into the store and mom, I need this, I need that. And of course that was depression time too. Depression, nobody had any money. And very few had cars. It's a month or once every week if they was lucky, they'd go and buy the groceries. Sometimes, if they had enough money, they would go to see a, a movie. And it was usually one of the westerns or something like that. About nickel and dime. Yeah, and uh, there was like an old Coney Island down there across from Lyric. And you could go there, you could buy a hamburger for a dime. You could get a Coney for a nickel, a bottle of pop for a nickel. And that was about it. That was a big treat. It was uh, well during the Depression. And as far back as I can remember, we never starved. We had plenty to eat. But they did, I can remember, when they did have what they call commodities. And just about everybody received commodities. They'd go down there once to every two weeks or once a week or something like that. But they had, to go, they had to go get it and bring it back. It wasn't fancy stuff, but it was good food. It was that garden. And uh, later years, uh, Dad hooked up this, uh, well, we had a little pump there on our well. And that well never did go dry. It was real good water. and. Later years, well, we'd get down there on and pump, and he had a hose running out to the garden, and that's how we irrigated the garden. In the fall of the year, we'd gather wild plums, wild grapes, and Mom would can these things. She canned corn, all vegetables, beans, stuff like that. So we had, you know, during, during the winter, they kept it in the cellar. And we had food. That's why we never starved. It got kind of towards uh, spring. Things would start <laughs> getting kind of bare around there, you know. But, but she always canned enough to carry us through. We'd go hunting. By that time, we had an old 22 caliber rifle. And Dad required us if we took seven shells, and we shot those seven shells, we had better bring back seven squirrels. There was no electricity, there was no running water, no gas. Well, if you lived on an oil lease, 
you had gas. We had a kerosene lamp, what they call a coal oil lamp. There is a difference between coal oil and kerosene because I know they used to take that coal oil. Sometimes if you had a sore throat and you couldn't hardly talk, they called it a horse throat, you know. You couldn't hardly talk. So they'd rub that coal oil. <laughs> Occasionally, they'd put a little bit in the spoon with a little sugar and you'd take that. Get them switches, they kind of they kind of stung a little bit. And especially the older you got, because mom would, we had a peach tree out there in the, in the uh, old, old orchard down there. And later years, mom used to catch us boys constantly if we'd done anything. And she'd tell us to go out there and get a switch. Well, you know what's going to, you know what's going to happen. But looking back, I was glad that mom was given a switch and not dad. When I was growing up, well, everything we learned, like what to call arithmetic, math, geometry, and all that, it went into your computer. The computer God gave us, right here, your brain. Today, I could go down to the grocery store, and time I get my basket loaded up and come back, I can tell them what I owe before they ever, I can tell them, well, that includes the tax. 